Hello from Tasmanis. Welcome. Right, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three second delay. Okay, we're running on a three second delay by the seams of it. Okay, good stuff. Now, let me just uh, say hi to everybody. I hope you're well. Hey, Kevin. Mr. Kramer. Mr. Smart. Mr. Krishvania. Tersev, Netherlands here. Are you guys excited about the, the European football thingy magic? Hello from Canada. Welcome. Let's get uh, let's get going. I drew these line again from yesterday. I really wanted to be long here. I'm probably a little bit late to the party, so this is on a 15-minute chart. Still think that on a Friday we should be able to reach this. Let's have a look at. Uh, for some reason I didn't get tech stocks up. Here's a daily chart. Daily chart had a big push up yesterday. And we are, uh, let me show you the weekly chart. We are approaching some very interesting levels in NASDAQ. And I still think that the 28th, you know, this this whole idea that the 28th of June could be a major high. Well, you know, we, we got to see when we get there and whether we want to be or we're going to go position short. But so far, it just feels like that the market is poised to move higher. We've seen it in the DAX today that it recovered from a very low base and is making new uh, highs. Uh, the same with the FTSE. I showed you that from a trend following perspective, the FTSE is making 21 day high, which is straight out of the, the market wizard turtle trader book. And the same with the DAX. Let me show you the DAX here. Uh, so this is the daily chart in the DAX. Let me first first off show you the weekly chart. Does this look like a, a weak chart to you? Does this look like the kind of thing where you go, "Ooh, I better be short here because it doesn't do it to me. This just looks like I need to be long and and long I am. You know, I, I got a, a very long, long position in the DAX. So to me, this looks like this, this has all the hallmarks of a bull market. And you know that I'm not the first person to be uh, to be bullish. I, I most certainly am not. So I think for today we are going to see if we can uh, find ourselves an entry point. Okay, something just made a noise. So this is the. I'm going to go over to a 10-minute chart in the Nasdaq. And in the meantime, we'll focus on the on the Dow. I just realized I haven't posted the link to YouTube. So let me just do that. I haven't posted that I'm live. There we go. Got about that. Here we go. So this is a 15 minute chart of the the Dow Jones index. Let's do a uh, Let's 
to. I'm just gonna. Got to be a little bit patient. Got a long day ahead of us. NASDAQ is bouncing off the lows. I want to show you this chart here because I think it's interesting. This is the DAX uh, today. And what's a little bit annoying about DAX today is that we had our first buy in the DAX here, right here. That was a that was a good trade, I felt. And then we added here. I wonder if I can. If nothing else that we can learn from it, I bought there, and then we added here and you see that little low there see that low there that low there is 65 66 and our stop loss was 67 or 68 so like two points now we could have gone in absolutely we could have gone in later but at that point in time it didn't it wasn't so obvious and as I said earlier, when we did the tuition, trend lines, they're often so much easier to handle after the fact. But nevertheless, you could argue, well, that was a pretty beautiful trend line there. But it's a bit annoying to be long there, like which turns out to be no more than 20 points from the low of the day. This was a good entry. And adding it was the right thing to do. But my stop loss was just too tight. It's just, oh, just that one or two points. Otherwise, we would have still been in there through thick and thin on a Friday afternoon in a bull market, DAX going towards a uh, marching towards an all time high. Because that's what it looks like, isn't it? We're just 50, 60 points from an all time high. So it's going to get there. At which point I'll be very happy here. Very, very happy here. But you know what Mark Douglas said? Anything can happen, just be patient. But we can't be lulled into this false sense of security that the market is going to rally.
we have to at least be mindful that the Nasdaq could be a short. The Dow could be a short here. Certainly not looking so strong right now. Just what you believe. So we could argue that the Nasdaq here could be a sell in this area here. I've sold Nasdaq here at 66.67. Gonna announce that. Sold the Nasdaq here at 66. Probably just going to add one more. And here's the chart, basis on this. So the Dow's falling. So I probably should have sold the Dow as well, but it turned out that the, the Nasdaq was just the one that had a, a somewhat clearer picture, it seems. So here we are in the, in the Nasdaq. Let me just show you what it looks like on the trading account. Got a, an entry around here at 67, 60. This is the trading ticket that matters. And I wonder if we should move the stop loss, but uh, let's give it a moment. It's not a huge position right now, and our stop loss is. Our stop loss could probably be up here at 88 instead. If it comes up here, I'm not so sure whether I am right. Keep an eye on the Dow. Dow keeps falling. But we shouldn't be fooled by that because the Dow can easily do the opposite of what the Nasdaq is doing. I mean, how many times have we seen Nasdaq just thundering ahead and then the Dow just sort of doing its own thing? 
but also notice what the the Nasdaq the DAX is doing. Not the kind of buy you want to see when you're short, is it? Shoot.
my stop loss is here. But I'm th wondering whether I should take my loss now. I still think still think that my stop loss is in the right place. Still think that this here could just be a blow off top and there's gonna be sellers into this area of resistance here. But uh, right now momentum is definitely not on my side. You guys might just want to be mindful of this that if the DAX cash on the CFD begins to trade below 86, you're probably going to see quite a fast run down to 70. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Don't know whether you want to scalp that short, but uh, I'd certainly be there and call it. So not much of a bounce in the Dow. Here's a one minute chart of the Dow. No real bounce. Let me show you why I made that call in the foots in the in the in the DAX. We're making a double top here. And I'm thinking, well, that's not the best sign in the world here if the Dow and the Nasdaq is not supporting the momentum. So if we are beginning to trade below these two lows here, I think the odds are pretty good that we're going to see a move down to this area here. And that price there is 86 and 80, 86 and a quarter and five three quarters. That's why I would consider a short position. Now let's go back to NASDAQ. Okay, so NASDAQ did reject the prices here and the NASDAQ position is, is looking well. Let's take a look at the Dow. Is the Dow collaborating with the weakness or is it not? Okay, so you got a, you actually do have a sell signal in the, in the, not almost, you almost got a sell signal in the uh, in the DAX now. Let's keep an eye on tech. So you should really be short the DAX now. Okay. Are you guys with me? Are you okay? It gets a little stressful at times, doesn't it? Just be supportive of each other. You can have different opinions, but be respectful of each other. Okay. Those of you who sold 86 in the DAX are now at 78. Okay, so at that point, you want to move your stop loss down to about 92. You don't want to have too much risk around. This is just about reading price action, guys and girls. That's all we're doing. Wrong chart. This is, don't want to look at me. Do you see what I'm getting at here? We have a double top. Support being broken here. Surely there must be a lot of sell orders here. And my goal here is to close that short down here 
around the 70 area. That's like uh, at a minimum. Okay. So you're not far off now. You have about 13 odd points in profit in, in the DAX. Okay, so stay with it. Protect your capital. Just protect your capital at all times. Okay, we're doing well. Nasdaq is doing well. DAX is doing well. I know I didn't actually call it in the Telegram group, but you know, hopefully you can take a hint. <laughs> Let's look at the Dow. Oh, not my face. Sorry about that. I am getting the hang of this OBS software. I'll get there. Okay, so here's the Dow on a one minute chart. Big spike up, big spike down. Reminds me of that song. Big Sally up, big Sally down. Da, da, da. Don't get me started on singing. Just, just don't, don't do it. Tom, don't start singing. Nasdaq fighting back. Okay, so what do we got? We got a 10 minute bar that tested resistance, was rejected all the way down and now it's full blown back up again. Wonder if there were some numbers out right now. I haven't actually checked. Should have done that, shouldn't I? Just a very quick one, Forex Factory. June the 11th, I don't see anything that should have. DAX kind of met its little short term projection. You had to be very quick for that. So we got a range here. We got a trading range. And what I've done is doing it on a 10 minute chart just to filter out a little bit of the noise. And quite frankly, this could go either way. And it doesn't seem to me that the Dow is going to be the, the catalyst driver for pushes higher. But you can't, you can't completely negate the fact how strong Europe is so is it just is it just the US marking that time before they push it up or are they generally weak today you got two big I think in the candle terminology they call that tweezers it's not exactly strong is it there's definitely resistance here I got some comments from people how I talked you through the DAX trade 
Um, my pleasure. I have to be honest with you. I, I did not take that trade myself. So I hope that you can appreciate that. I, I was just talking you through the trade, but I'm more long term um, biased in this in, at the in the DAX at the moment. Um, but that's not to say that I can't guide you through a short term in the opposite direction. But as long as you fully accept that I didn't take that trade myself, I just want to hold my hand up there. I didn't go short the, the DAX when I called it below at, at 86 because I got a lot of long positions, just so we're clear, okay? I don't know if you want a little lesson in uh, in price action, but take a look at the pattern in the DAX right now that I, I called that here, there. And then look at the Dow. Not dissimilar patterns. blow off top breaking price action support and then very quickly down came back and tested it here of course when you're trading an instrument that has 35 34,000 on as as the beginning you know you're going to get your points a lot quicker than an index that has 15,000 so 10 points in the in the DAX is by that factor 20 points in the at least in the Dow. I think you should be out of that DAX by now, but if you're not, then fair play to you. You might want to consider then be out of break even because the pattern kind of completed. Right. <clears throat> So during these sessions, I'm, I wouldn't generally be able to answer questions. It's a good fight. Javi or Sola is saying such a fight in the, in the NASDAQ. It is a good fight, isn't it? You're like, you feel like, come on, give me your best game. Uh, Rudy is asking me, am I expecting a, bear, a bull market top? It's just this thing that we've been playing around with Rudy. Please don't read too much into it, okay? I'm, I'm not this cataclysmic uh, forecaster a la Nostradamus to say that the, it's going to be at the end and, and Armageddon. It's just, you know, I wouldn't say it's just a bit of fun. I'm just using a forecasting tool. That's all.
it's going to swap to a shorter time frame. In the Nasdaq, we've got very little direction. Quite frankly, I'm not sure if we should be short basis on this pattern here. Sure, we were rejected at resistance twice, but we were also supported twice at support. So you really can call it either way. Now, I'm, I'm trading a half position here. So I'm not going to, and the stop loss is relatively benign. That doesn't mean I want to not be focused on it. Gold is falling. I think we just need to be a little patient because the DAX is sort of not in a rush to get up now. Dow keeps making new lows. Wrong one. CNBC. We're currently along the FTSE in Telegram, and that's looking okay. DAX seems to be struggling a little bit at 15,700. Got a double top. I guess it's all about the NASDAQ and this trading range here. Will we? Won't we? About 12 points offside. What's going to be interesting for us is if if the Nasdaq begins to fall below this key level here, which is about 
our entry point. We could argue a move down to 40 is coming and that could give us some opportunity to add to our short position. Let me swap to a higher time frame in the Nasdaq. Kind of gives us a good picture of where we are. Now in the Nasdaq is below, DAX is below 80 again. 78. Look at, look at Dow, how it's falling. Gotta wonder how the Nasdaq can keep up its momentum. I think the Dow is now down for the day. I want to do a quick latency test. Feel that there might be some latency. Three sec. Okay. Nasdaq is testing this area again. My stop loss is up here. We're just moving into a new 10 minute chart. A new, sorry, new uh, 15 minute chart. Let me show you it differently here. So we just, we have two strong five minute bull bars, but it is in a trading range. So in that context, Al Brooks would say that whenever you have a bull bar going into a trading range top, you sell short. And it seems that that, but if we begin to make progress above 85 in the NASDAQ, I think the odds are higher that we are, sorry, I am on the wrong side. Here's the Dow. Bulls need to chew their way through this area here, and they might do it. They're not getting any help from the Dow, but they may, they may do it. In which case, I'll have a loss. But right now, they're sitting there and they're getting nervous as well, and they're thinking. Come on, get through this level. Come on, come on. And we are sitting here thinking, come on, down you go. I 
The odds are slightly in our favor. We have 60% odds of winning, they have 40% odds of winning. Why? Well, because you got a, a prior high into a trading range. So technically, we're headed down here again. It's a slightly different time frame. And when we do the post-mortem, maybe the story is going to be that it was drawn to 14,000. Very possible, very plausible. But hey, it's always easy after the fact. We've got to deal with what's right here, right now. We don't have that luxury of being a technical analyst that can sit there and going, I told you it was going to be the high. And look at this double bottom moving average crossover stochastic oscillator MACD RSI indicator that I have developed on my AI. Yeah, whatever. I traded it. I was there. I created the chart print there. You're just talking about it. Fun trading in the summer heat, isn't it? Because none of us are dreaming about, you know, ice cream and cold beers, or in my case, cold wheatgrass juice. And I have to be careful what I say here, but you know, skimpy clad ladies in tight fitting bikinis. None of us are thinking of that. We're thinking, ooh, that Nasdaq does look sexy, doesn't it? Sumit just said, I want to get inside the screen and pull it th th down. I know that feeling so well, Sumit. It's like, yeah, come on, I'm going to pull you down. But but look at it. Okay, just look at it, okay? This is a 10-minute chart. We've got one, two, three. We've got four attempts. Yeah, I, can't, I can't predict what's going to happen, but I do know that this is a fair game. It could go either way. We're short. Maybe we're going to take the price. Maybe we're not. But it is quite an exciting game, isn't it? Who would want to be on a beach at the Keys in Florida and whatnot and looking at bodacious ladies swaggering around when we could have charts of the NASDAQ? And, you know, we, we have our own Coca-Cola. Yeah, we got a party right here. Okay, you need to get out more, Tom. Let's take a look at what's going on. FTSE is thinking, Jesus, US, are you going up or are you going down? It's like Sally up, Sally down. DAX is like, yeah, I flirted with 15,700. I was going nowhere. I'm headed into a trading range. And that's probably what the, the, the DAX is doing now, trading range. It's developing into a trading range after a double top. Dow, Dow is just plain old weak today, really weak. The problem we have with being short the Nasdaq is that if the Dow was to bounce, maybe the Nasdaq has used that as an excuse as, right, here comes the cavalry, here we go. Because we're consolidating just below that area of resistance. I'd be a lot happier to see the, the Nasdaq down here. But maybe it's coming now.
Did you read my question, Tom? I guess I didn't. What's the question, Math? No. Tom, how can you run so easy lines? I don't know what that means. What does what does that mean? Guys, you have to understand, I'm not sitting monitoring the YouTube, the channel. I don't sit there and watch your questions. I just, every now and then, I sweep over to see if you guys are okay, making sure that the volume... So if you've asked me a question, I... Sorry. We're, we're trading live here. Uh, I'm short $200 a point. So, so sorry if I'm not answering questions. Why are you math? Why are you asking me about Antel Krill? You know, I think I've already made it very clear to you how I feel. Someone seemed to get their knickers in a twist that I haven't answered their question. I don't know Anton Krill. All I know is that it's, he's got one of the more popular videos where apparently he decimates retail traders and brokers, after which he goes on to talk about his own seminars. And I guess there's just a, a, an element of hypocrisy in that. That's all. I'm sorry, I haven't listened through that diatribe. It's a long video, and if it's just the guy who's pushing his own agenda, I'm really not interested. Some people believe in fundamental analysis. Some people believe in technical analysis. I think I have amply proven in a live environment, right here, right now, that what I am, what we are doing, and what we can do is possible, plausible. Then people can have an opinion. What is that James Blunt said? Uh, opinions are like assholes. We all have one. So, boom. There you go. Wow, what a trading range. I think I want to close my 
Nasdaq short position now. Here at the uh, at seventy eight. Okay, so I've closed it. I'm cl I've closed it because it feels to me as this market is not really doing what we would like it to do. Sure, it hasn't broken support yet, hasn't broken resistance yet, but it just feels like that every single time that we are headed up, every single time that we are headed down to break this area, we are not really getting anywhere. And whilst we're not really making inroads it just feels to me with that long spike up here that the odds have increased that we are going to see a push towards 14,000. So I suppose I at that point thinking I would rather just be out and take a small loss of 11 points rather than taking a 30 point loss. Javi, it does mean drain your mental energy to breathe in like that, doesn't it? It's like, oh, come on. Let's take a look at the Dow. So we got a new low in the Dow and we got a bull high. So let's see if we can actually get a move across these tops here. It's a bit short terminism and then, you know, quite frankly, it feels a bit silly to be a buyer. But let's just try and clean this uh, chart up a little bit. By the way, doesn't it feel liberating to be out of that trade? I mean, you did your work, you, you did your best, and you came to the decision, not really sure this was working out. And maybe it will work out, in which case you are free to enter again. But right now it just feels like a dog fight and it's like ah, back and forth with no real conviction either side. Here's the, the Dow on a four hour chart. That's a fairly hefty four hour candle. So I wouldn't be in a rush to be a buyer of this. I'm noticing that uh, once again, the Nasdaq failed at this area here. So we may have to go in again.
Ah, this one. Ha! So cool. I did it. Oh, can I regret that? I guess not. <laughs> I got a I got a friend here who is uh, who's writing to me in Telegram, and he's like he's just applauding me. <laughs> like, I did it. <laughs> Ah, that's kind of funny. So then I'll have to write these, draw these lines again. Ah. So I have actually closed my NASDAQ, but I could be tempted to do something again. I'm just going to mark my time though. So very, very negative bar here. A real, it just feels like a very final bar close right at the lows so if we're over the next five minute bar get an inside bar it could be quite interesting for us to buy the top of that inside bar This is a real, this is a real sight to behold, isn't it? Back and forth, back and forth. There we go.
I think I'm gonna be a seller of the Nasdaq here. It looks like it's broken this. This could be quite interesting. I'm short here. I'm 64, actually 62.8, sorry. I think the stop loss could, with favor, be put to uh, nine So that's their scenario in the Dow. We're near a new low and we are moving above. So I'm wondering if the Dow is now gonna be the one that pushes higher and the Nasdaq gonna be the one that pushes lower. Come on Nasdaq, down you go. Come on son. I'm thinking let's take uh, some, some profit here at 51, 52. You can close half. It just it just feels like this is a an an odd trading environment. So 
So either that or maybe I'm going soft. Oh, here we go. 47, 48. Come on. Show you on the chart. Excuse me. Come on, footsie. We're long footsie. That's good. We like it. Just here's my short position in the NASDAQ here. And it just feels really, really, really slow. I am very blushed today. I did the, a hit session out in the blazing sunshine. Pool. That was not actually nice. It really wasn't. Oh, shoot on camera. Again. Just tell me to go off camera, guys. Want a big shout out to my friend, homeboy Leinster, Leinster Lenny. You're doing a fantastic job. Fat Simpson says that the Russell is collapsing. All right, could be interesting to see. Um, TD365 doesn't charge commission, web page, range day, right, I'll let you talk, I'll see if I can find the Russell.
Hope you guys are well. Hey Mosin, don't you think we've all been there? Let's have a look. Indice size, US. Uh, Russell 2000. Someone's saying they're collapsing. Really? What am I missing? <laughs> Who who just said that the Russell was collapsing? Do we need to send you to spec savers, young man? What am I missing? So someone was saying the Russell is collapsing. I don't know. I I gotta go back and everything. Does that really? collapsing isn't it it's like I wouldn't call this a collapse I would call it <laughs> yeah ah, you guys are funny I'm gonna get rid of Russell here again and go back to tech I say move stop loss to entry in NASDAQ. When you hear me type, that's just me answering some questions to people. A hit session is a high intensity, high intensity interval training. Hit it. it. This is the daily chart on the FTSE. I've stopped out of the Dow. Sorry, stopped out of NASDAQ. Stopped out. Just then, it makes a big move down. Wow.
check out the double bottom in gold. On what time frame would that be? This one, I suppose. Okay, let's just do a recap here. Since we started streaming, the NASDAQ has gone from 90 to 70 to 90 to 80. FTSE that we're long off is just doing its thing and it has no rush. We've been short the NASDAQ Decided to take my loss, then shorted it again. That was good, took some profit, then got stopped out for break even on the rest, and now still looks weak to me. But I think I'm the one who's not gonna call that. The real game today that I wasn't on board was the Dow. That's a shame because that would have been a hundred pointer. So not the most profitable of live trading sessions, minus 11 on NASDAQ, then plus 11 on NASDAQ on half and stopped out on the other half. So net net a loss, small admittedly. Um, also losing in DAX early in the day. That was a shame. Made that up for some decent trade in the FTSE, which is doing nothing. Lots to learn from this session here, no doubt. The market doesn't feel overtly bearish. It just perhaps feels a little range bound. I'm not sure what exactly the NASDAQ wants to do. What I do know, it's Friday. And I think that I will leave it here. We've been streaming for feels like a, a, a good hour or so, hour and a half. So look after yourself. Where am I? There are you. Look after yourself. Have a lovely weekend. And I will see you Monday morning. One thing you should be mindful of is this though, <clears throat> before I leave you. If Friday's high of the day is lower than the Thursday's high of the day, then the odds are high that we are going to see a weaker Monday. Okay, just be mindful of that. Have a great weekend.